I'm Chris Weinrich, Director of Packaging and Medical for Conair. Today, I'd like to discuss some common trends we see occurring in the plastics packaging market, what Conair is doing to support these trends, and address some of the challenges these trends are creating within the packaging market. At Conair, we love working the packaging market. It's a large, diverse market that utilizes all the major plastics manufacturing processes, injection molding, extrusion, as well as the various methods of blow molding, injection blow molding, extrusion, blow molding, and stretch blow molding. This, this is ideal for Conair, as we produce auxiliary equipment to support all these major processes. The projected growth rates for the packaging market are all positive, no matter who, who you listen to, which is one of the reasons we focus a significant amount of our product development efforts on products that support this packaging market. We categorize the market into two major segments, rigid and flexible. Rigid packaging is primarily containers using injection molding and the various blow molding processes. Flexible packaging is made up of products produced by film and sheet extrusion, including thermal forming. There are two significant trends we see happening today in both the rigid and flexible segments of the plastic packaging market. The first is the change in the materials being processed. The second is an increase in efforts to reduce energy consumption. With regard to the first trend, there are really two components to a change in the materials we see being processed. One component is the increased use of post-consumer recycled materials and in-house regrind in packaging products. The increase in usage of both HDPE and PET post-consumer recycled material has been fast and steady. This has driven changes in drying systems, blending systems, and even material storage. The push to utilize more regrind content has many customers automating their granu granulation systems so that the regrind is entered back into their process without additional labor. We see this trend in both the rigid and flexible segments of the market. The second component of this trend of a change in materials being processed is the replacement of traditional materials that are generally not highly recycled with materials that are more highly recycled and forecasted to have grow, growing rates of recycling. This seems to be more prevalent in the flexible segment of packaging with our film and sheet customers. PET and polypropylene to a lesser extent appear to be replacing styrene-based products in many instances. PET's higher rate of recycling makes PET PCR more readily available. We also see an increase in the use of bio-based materials such as PLA. However, I believe the trend to bio-based resins will continue to be a slow process as the current resin compared to traditional materials pose some economic challenges for many sheet and film products. The transition to PET seems to be happening at a much quicker pace. This shift in increasing the requirement for drying systems, material storage, and imp improved efficiencies in material conveying. It is the processor's end customer and the customer that appears to be driving the demand for higher recycled content. The second overall trend is an increase in efforts to reduce energy consumption. This has been going on for quite some time, but the efforts to reduce energy consumption seem to be increasing recently. I think both of these trends are part of the bigger goal of sustainability for plastics. While those of us in the plastics industry are aware of the diversity of plastics and its properties that provide an advantage over other materials for so many products, the general population, to a large extent, think of plastics only for consumer packaging. They do not think of, or may not be aware of, the tremendous benefit plastics provide in life-saving medical devices, automobile design and light weighting, building and construction material improvements, infrastructure, electronics, household convenient products, etc. Therefore, anything we can do to improve the recycling and sustainability of plastics, specifically in packaging, can have a tremendous effect on the overall perception of plastics. I wouldn't expect either of these trends mentioned are surprising to most of you, and I think you would agree that these trends are going to continue for quite some time. They do create some interesting opportunities for processors and equipment providers. As mentioned, these trends are helping to define our product development efforts here at Conair.